Hi guys, Lone Vic here again, and I'm back with the first how to play video of 2022. In this new year, we'll start with Aqua Garden, a long overdue game that I was supposed to film, but some technical difficulties and health issues prevented me from doing this earlier. So here we are. Aqua Garden is a game for one to four players in which you will be competing to create the best aqua park or aquarium possible. You'll be populating the aquariums with fish and plants and scoring points for a different combination of those. The game was published uh, last year in Japan from by uh, the publisher Uchibakoya, sorry if I'm pronouncing it incorrectly or something like that. And I'll also mention that these guys are coming out on January 22nd with a new Kickstarter called Ostia and you can check it out. Uh, there is also a page where you can sign up for the information about this new Kickstarter and the creators also informed that you will be able to purchase most of their previous games. So also Aqua Garden with all the expansions during this new Kickstarter. So if you like this game or if you get convinced by the videos that you watch about this game, you'll be able to find it over there. If you enjoy this video and you would like to support my channel, please click the like button under the video, hit the subscribe, ring the notification bell to be notified about new uh, content on my channel. And now without further ado, let's dive in into how to play Aqua Garden. Okay, so here we are guys. Now in this video, I will be talking about gameplay for two to four players. If you're interested in learning how to play this game solo, check out another video on my channel which contains a solo playthrough of this game and it has also all the necessary information to learn how to play this game solo and this video will land on my channel still in this week. But right now two to four player game and let's start with the setup. So as you can see I've got the main game board here, I've got the ocean board over here and I've got a player board here. Now each player gets one but I've only uh, put one in front for organization's sake because the room here on the table is limited. So after you've placed all of those boards you should take the milestone cards and divide them into their four corresponding categories. There are the small and large fish milestone cards, there are the shark milestone cards, the sea turtle milestone cards and the seahorse milestone cards. Now each of these sets has three cards in them and for each game you select only one at random so and place it face up on the table so that everybody is in easy reach of those cards and they are in view. The rest of these cards go back into the box. Now each milestone card as you can see has a matching fish token which is different in color from the normal fish tokens that come in the game. And you should locate those tokens and place them on their respective milestone cards. So for the small fish milestone card you require these two fishies. For the shark milestone card is the gray shark meeple. For the turtle milestone card is the purple turtle accompanied also by one seaweed token and here we've got this brown seahorse. Now depending on the number of players you should put a specific number of fish into the bag that has been delivered together with the game. Now it's all written out in the rule book, but let me remind you right now that if you are playing with four players, all of the 65 fish tokens land in the bag. If you are playing a three player game, you should take out five small fish, four large fish, two sharks, two sea turtles, one whale shark and one seahorse from the bag. That's a total of 15 tokens removed from the bag before the start of the game. For a two player game the numbers are exactly the same. Now as you can see here the main board has those areas around it 
And right now, after you have placed all the required fish in the bag, you should populate the board, drawing one fish per area. And mind you that while you are drawing those fish from the bag, it's easy to feel which fish you have in your hand because they are all different shapes and sizes. But try to be fair as you are doing it and not, uh, you know, look for specific fish species or anything like that. Let's speed this up a bit, shall we? Here we are. Now, after drawing all of those fish onto the board, you should also randomly draw five fish and place them onto the ocean board or seaboard, as it's also called in the rulebook. Here we are. The next step is to take all of the seaweed and coral tokens and also place them on the seaboard so that they are available for everyone to purchase. Take the square white round marker and place it on round one. And right now the main board and the seaboard and the milestones are ready to play the game. Now let's take a look at what we have to do to prepare each player. So each player should take one fund token and place it on this marked space with number two on it on their aquarium board. They should also take all of the tokens of their color, for this demonstration I have chosen red, and place the owner, so the big meeple, on one of the spaces on the starting area of the board. In this case I've placed this one here. Place the employee token on this marked space on your aquarium board right over here and these four tokens somewhere next to the milestone cards. Shuffle the five feeding event cards and randomly distribute one to each player face down. The card that you received should go here onto the right side of the aquarium board. Right next to those two aquariums with the word event written on them. If you are playing an advanced game, which also consists of the advanced fish species, right now you should place those three cards with the advanced species. So I've got the remoras and the flapjack octopuses and the uh, manta cards. Place them somewhere nearby for everybody to see. And also place the wooden meeple tokens of those species onto the card. So here we have the remoras, here we have the flapjacks, and here we have the manta. If you are playing a regular game, skip this step entirely. Okay, so right now every player should be ready to participate in a game. I've set up a game for uh, the only one aquarium mat, so I will just add an additional meeple here or two additional meeples here, to be honest, for the rest of the players, because that's how it should look like, for example, for a free or two-player game. Okay, so now let's talk about how to play this game. And the first thing is that there is a very significant difference when playing between a three and four-player game than a two-player game. So if you are playing with four players, you are playing four rounds of the game. So one, two, three, and four. If you are playing three or two players, you are playing only three rounds, so you are ending the game right here. You're not playing the fourth round. If you are playing with two players, you should have three meeples here with this third meeple called Lucy being this kind of a bot player who occupies some spaces and, uh, you know, removes some fish from the board. And during the game, each player will be moving around the board, starting from the player who is the furthest behind. Remember Glenmore? It was a similar mechanic of this rondel style of playing. So the red player would move first and occupy some space, and after he performs an action there, the second player would be the green player who is moving, and they would move somewhere like here, for example, and then in a three-player game, or a four-player game, if there was a fourth player, the white player would move. 
and choose any space. But in a two-player game, this white meeple here is the bot player, or Lucy, and Lucy always moves one space in front of the furthest player ahead, and if it's a place, if it's a space with a fish, that fish goes onto the seaboard, and if it's this blue space with advertising, nothing happens. And if Lucy reaches this finishing space as the first player, she will get to this first space, and then she will start the next round as the first player. And that's the only rule change that governs a two-player game for Aqua Garden. So you have to remember about moving this bot every time that it's the last one in line. Okay, but what about the rest of the gameplay? So as I've already mentioned, players will be going around this board to performing actions over the course of three or four rounds, depending on the number of players. So there are two actions to choose from. The first action is connected to these aquarium spaces with the fish tokens on them. So if a player moves onto any aquarium space with a fish token, they have the choice of collecting this fish and adding it to their aquarium, or if they decide that they don't need this fish for any reason, they can throw it out onto the seaboard, which sometimes happens, but rarely. Okay, but if you want to collect this fish for yourself, the first thing that you do is that you, are, you have to move your employee around your aquarium over those six fields, and they, are, they have arrows pointing the direction, which is clockwise, for the movement. So this guy, this employee, can move one, two, or three steps. So like one, two, three, or one, two. And this movement has to happen every single time when you land on this field before you add the fish to your aquarium. So if I choose this area, I move my employee and then I add the fish to an aquarium that's currently neighboring my employee after the employee has moved. So for example, here or here in this case. So the employee can never stand in the same place when you want to add a new fish from this area. And now what happens is that every time this employee passes from this area to this one, you collect one cash, so you would move the slider from two to three, and you trigger a feeding event. And we'll get back to this a little later. But for now the employee is here and I have one fish over here because I've collected it from this area. Now, remember that you can add those fish collected from here only to the aquariums neighboring your employee. What else can you do? You also, while you are resolving this area, before adding this fish to the aquarium or after adding it, you can spend two of your cash to purchase one seaweed token, one coral token, or one of the fish available on the seaboard and add them to the aquariums neighboring your employee. And you can repeat this action as many times as you want. So you would be able, for example, to purchase two seaweed if you had four money, but there can be only one seaweed and one coral per aquarium. Whereas with the fish, you can have more of those, but the limit is one for each plant type in an aquarium. Now let's focus on the aquariums for a moment and take a look at the iconography on the bottom of the board over here. So this symbolizes that each aquarium has four of air that it generates. And here you have the air levels that each fish consumes. So for example, this white fish consumes one air. So this aquarium only has three air left for other fishes and you can never go over the limit. So for example, if I added another large fish here, this aquarium would only have two air left. And also this iconography here at the bottom gives us some additional information. So these fish only consume, and also the corals, only consume air and there is nothing more to be said about those. But turtles consume two air, 
but in order to place a turtle in an aquarium, you have to have seaweed present in the aquarium. This seaweed can be purchased before collecting the turtle from the board, but you can't have a turtle in an aquarium without a seaweed. So if you were to remove the seaweed for some reason and there was a turtle in the aquarium, you would have to remove the turtle as well. And every single time you want to get rid of something from your aquarium because you uh, exceeded the oxygen level or you want to change your tactic, you just take it out during your turn and throw it out to the seaboard where other players can purchase it, whether it's a fish or a plant. Now, going to the shark for a moment, sharks also consume two air, but as you can see here, they cannot be in an aquarium with turtles, large or small fishes, because they would eat them, right? So sharks can only be present in aquariums with whale sharks and with seahorses and with plants, obviously, but they cannot be with small, large fish or turtles. The whale sharks are no problem, but they consume four air and the seaweed, remember, there can be only one per aquarium, generates two additional air, increasing your air level to six in that aquarium. But six is the maximum that you can get, so you never can exceed six. Right? And if you look at the advanced cards, those also have information about how much air is being consumed by each type of fish. But here with the advanced fish, there is a limitation. In each aquarium, there can be only one advanced fish of any type. So in one aquarium, you can have one flapjack, one manta and one remora, but you can't have two remoras in one aquarium. And that's all of the limitations connected with the aquariums to be honest. So now coming back to this feeding event for a moment, because while you collect those fish from the board, your employee will be moving and inserting those new fishies into the neighboring um, aquariums. And so at some point they will cross this area again. And what happens then is that you again collect one money and then you trigger this event of feeding. And I didn't mention it the first time around because when you're starting the game and moving your employee for the first time, you will only connect, collect one money because you won't have any fish here yet. So this feeding event won't be possible to be resolved. So it should be resolved during your first move as well, but it will be resolved to a null, to zero. So it will only generate one cash. Now, I know that this may sound a bit counterintuitive and uh, I, when I read this rule, I thought, why just not start with three cash and move this marker somewhere here or whatever. But I've talked to the designer of the game and it turned out that during testing this solution came out as the most logical and balanced one and I also got an explanation why, trust me it's a good one, it's re regarding those advanced fishes, but let's not get into that. You can find the discussion on the Board Game Geek forums uh, for this game where the question was asked by me. So, okay, so you collect this one coin after you pass this area and you trigger the event. And in this case, my event would say that for every pair of a shark and coral in these two aquariums only, I would get a one additional coin when I trigger this event by passing it with my employee. So if my situation in my aquariums looked like this, hypothetically, right? So for example, I had a shark here and two corals here, I would get one coin from passing this area and one additional coin from triggering the event because I've got one pair of shark and coral. Remember, because this is important as well and what, during my first play I got a bit confused, this pair does not have to be in a single tank. This pair has to be present in both of those tanks collectively, right? So this is something to keep in mind. Okay, let's empty my aquariums right now and let's move to other examples. Where was this shark? Here. Okay, cool. So this is it for the collecting fish action. I've mentioned everything to be honest. Remember that when you place your meeple on any of those blue spaces you have to move your employee first, then you place the fish in one of the neighboring aquariums and you can purchase elements from the seaboard for two coins 
per element before or after taking this action. And also, this guy, let's repeat this once more, moves one, two or three spaces every single time he moves, but you also can prolong his movement to four or five spaces by paying one coin per additional space, but he can't move more than five. So you can move him basically from here to one, two, three, four, five over here, but you would have to lose two coins at the start of the game, for example. So I don't know if this pays off really. And this is mentioned here on this iconography where you have those one, two, three movement arrows and the fourth one is in a bracket with one coin. So if you want to move the employee four or five spaces, you have to pay one or two additional coins for those movements. And if your meeple moves to a blue space, it's called an advertising space. And this has a totally different uh, effect. So first of all, you cannot purchase anything from the seaboard while you are on an advertising space. Second of all, you have the option to choose one of two things while on an advertising space. The first thing that you can do is choose one of the adverts and get the amount of coins equal to the number of fishes present in all of your tanks in your aquarium. So for example, for every two small fishes present in your aquarium, you would get one coin for every large fish you would get one coin every shark and every coral would get you one coin individually the same goes for turtles so just to picture it more let's populate my aquariums a bit if my situation looked like this and i went onto the advertising space i could choose this advert and take one coin for these two fishes or i could take one coin for this fish. If I had more than one of those fishes, I could take more coins because each one gives me one. So I would get two in this case. All right, cool. So this is it. And you also can ignore the advertisements completely while on this blue space, but only in an advanced game, because in an advanced game, when you land on this space, you also have the option to buy one of these advanced fishes and place it in an aquarium. And in this case, you pay the cost. You remember about the air limits that are printed on the cards, but you can place these fish in any tank on your board, not necessarily neighboring your employee when he is currently standing, because when you land on this space, your employee doesn't move. He moves only when you land on the light blue spaces while collecting fish. So these guys, while purchased, go into any aquarium on the board, but remember only one of each type can be in an aquarium, right? So you pay the cost, you watch out for the air levels, and you throw them in. And they give you some additional points, additional scorings for the end of the game. I think there is only one more thing that we need to mention while playing this game, and that is the milestone cards. And the milestone cards work in a very simple way. Now, any time you complete a milestone card, which means that you have an aquarium that is identically populated to the one printed on the card. So for example, if you have an aquarium with one big fish, three small fishes and a seaweed, regardless of any other animals that you have there, but you have at least this combination here, you collect this milestone. And if you are the first player to get this set collected, you place your mar marker on the first position, which means that you get these two extra fishes and five victory points at the end of the game. The second player would get four points, the third player would get three points, and the fourth player would get three points as well, but no extra fish because those tokens are already gone. You can't occupy the same achievement twice, so there are only four markers. And if you are lucky enough to collect those extra fish tokens from the achievements, similarly to the advanced fish tokens, you don't have to place them in the tanks neighboring your employee, but you can place them in any tank 
that's appropriate, that has the exact, that has the necessary oxygen level and doesn't contain sharks in this case or whatever. After a few moves and collecting fishes and so forth and so on, right, with the third player going as well, or Lucy in a two-player game, you'll find yourself in a situation where the only possible movement will be to the, for example, in the case of the green player who is the last right now, he would be able to move here to collect this fish or here to end their round. And in this case, you move to the lowest possible space on this beginning track. So the green player, if they don't want to move here, they would move here to the first position, and the red player, if they ignore the uh, fish, would move here, and the white player would move here, for example, and this would be the order of play for the next round. And what happens when all the players reach this area? We move down the marker to round number two, and we draw one additional fish from the bag to each of the spaces, even the ones that contain already one fish. So some spaces will have two fish that you'll be able to collect in the second round with one movement. And if you don't want to collect both of them, you can collect one and throw the other one to the seaboard, or you can throw out both of them to the seaboard, that doesn't really matter, but Remember that the order of play is always from the last player, so sometimes it pays off to occupy this lower space because you'll be the first player for the next round of play. And this goes on for three rounds in a two- or three-player game and four rounds in a four-player game. And after the game is finished, you need to calculate the points. So what do you get points for in this game exactly? The first thing is that you collect points for tokens, for fish tokens, in your aquarium at the end of the game, regardless in which aquarium they are. And as you can see here, the points are as follows. Every pair of large and small fish gives you three points. Every turtle gives you two points. Every shark gives you two points. Every seahorse is two points as well. Every whale shark is four points, and each coral is one point. Seaweeds don't give you points at the end of the game. They only give you additional air to your tanks. After calculating this, each three coins that you have left at the end of the game translate to one additional victory point. Each milestone you've collected gives you points that are printed next to the marker, uh, to your marker's location, and the position of your owner token at the end of the game can give you additional points as well. If your token is on the first position here, you will get three victory points, the second position grants you two, the third gives you one victory point, and the last player in line in a four-player game would get zero victory points. And if you are playing an advanced game, you also should adhere to the rules from the advanced cards. For example, you would earn one victory point for each type of fish token in the same tank as the flapjack octopus. So, for example, if my tank looked like this for some reason, and let me just calculate if this is an okay solution, because I would have six oxygen right now, this one eats two, four, five, and six, yes, so this is legal, so this flapjack would give me one, two, three victory points, one per each fish token in the same tank. This is not a fish token, this is a plant, so this doesn't give me a victory point, right? And for example, the, the remora would give you two victory points for each remora in the same tank as one or more sharks or whale sharks and you can earn four VP from each remora in the same tank as one or more of both shark and whale shark so it pays off to join these together. And there is a fun misprint here on the Manta in the original box because uh, instead of the instruction for scoring points there is an information from the translator or from the proofreader of this card which accidentally got printed onto the card. So you have to refer to the rule book to remember what the manta does. And for mantas, you get one victory point per fish for the most numerous type of fish in your aquarium board. So you take a look at which of the fish you have the most and you get one victory point for each of those fishes. 
uh, not in one aquarium, but on the whole board. Seaweed tokens and coral tokens cannot be counted as fish tokens, and regular and fish and milestone fish tokens have the same shape and are counted the same. So this is basically it. Okay, so I think that this wraps up the game of Aqua Garden and for two, three and four players. If you have any questions or doubts about the rules, you can write them out in the comment section below the video. I'll be sure to answer any of your doubts. Remember that there are also uh, expansion packs for the game that you could get from Kickstarter or you will be able to get from the new Ostia Kickstarter as well. The link will be in the description of the video. And those basically in most cases replace the advanced fish options with some other creative ways for scoring points, but they do not influence the main game. So I hope that everything here was clear. If you are looking for the solo player rules for this game, check out my solo playthrough video where I'll be playing this game and explaining how to play the solo version. It's not that different from this version of the game. It has just a few tweaks in the rules. You can also check my review, which should be posted, which should be up on my channel next week. Once again, if you want to support the channel and support the work that I do here, click the like button, hit the subscribe and ring the notification bell. You can leave a trace in the comments as well. And thank you very much for watching. I hope that this video helped you navigate through the rules for this game of Aqua Garden from Uchi Bakoyo. My name was Lone Vic. Again, this was Aqua Garden. Have a great day and see you soon. Bye bye.